Hello, this is William from Visual Components. In this video, I'm going to show you how to offline program Stobly robots using Visual Components 4.1 with its Stobly add-on. Before you get started, make sure you are using Visual Components Premium because it supports the Stobly add-on. What you want to do is click the File tab to go backstage, click Options, click Add-on, and for the Stobly add-on, make sure you have it enabled. I do, which is why you have the option to disable it. If you need to, click the Enable button, click OK to save the change, and restart the application. I do not have to do that because I have the add-on enabled, so I will click Cancel. In the 3D world, I have a layout open, which you can find a link to in the video description. It is a very basic machine tending operation. Open the layout in the 3D world. If you run the simulation, parts move along a conveyor. A part is stopped, the robot picks up the part and puts it in a machine. The machine runs through a process. The robot will then pick up the part and put it on this conveyor. And the whole operation repeats itself. Let's select the robot and take a closer look at its program. I'll reset and now go to the program tab. In the program editor panel, I'm only using the main routine, but you can, of course, use subroutines. I left comments in the robot's program to explain what I'm doing. Overall, I'm using the inputs and outputs of the robot with signals and other components to make the machine tending operation work. To understand how those inputs and outputs are working, I will select the robot in the 3D world, go to the connect group, and click signals. In the connect signals task pane here, I'll use the signals filter to only show connected signals to the robot. You can see I have three inputs and four outputs. Input 100 is connected to the bladder stopper, which is this component here. This input will let the robot know when there is a part in the stopper. Input of 101 is connected to the process machine, which is this component here. This will let the robot know when the machine has finished running its process and it can pick up a part. Input of 102 this is connected to the bladder stopper, and this lets the robot know when the stoppers, the clamps here of our bladder, are closed. Output of 100 is connected to the bladder stopper, and this allows the robot to send a signal to the bladder to release the part, so the robot can pick up the part. Output of 101 is connected to the process machine. This allows the robot to send a signal to the machine that a part is inside it and it can run its process. Output of 102 is connected to a conveyor motor on this conveyor here. This allows the robot to turn off the conveyor's path when it's placing a part, and then turn the conveyor's path back on after it placed the part. Output of 103 is connected to this conveyor's motor here. This allows the robot to turn off the conveyor's path when it's picking up a part here at the bladder stopper. It can then turn the conveyor's path back on when it picks up the part. So hopefully you quickly understand how the robot's program is working, as well as the signals being used with the robot's inputs and outputs. What we have to do now is connect our robot to a CS8 controller in Stobly Robotics Suite. But before we do that, I've already created another tutorial that explains the basics of using the Stobly add-on. Because in this tutorial, we're just focusing on mapping the signals in the robot to the controller. So I will go to the Visual Components Academy. Now search for that course. Just use a keyword of VAL3. And here is the tutorial. So this will give you the basics of using the Stobly add-on to connect the robot in the 3D world to the robot in the controller and synchronize the data. Let's minimize this. And now what we want to do is show the Stobly cell configuration panel. I'll go to the show option here in the Windows group. And you can see I already have the panel selected, so it is visible in my program tab. So I actually docked it to be in the same location as the program editor panel. And in the layout, I've already done most of the work for you. I already created the emulator connection and mapped the robot to the controller I am connecting to. Select the emulator connection here. And now let's close the connect signals command and go to the properties panel. Right now, the state of our connection is false, so we're disconnected 
from a controller at this address. I'm using a local host address of 127.0.0.1 and I'm connecting using the SOAP port of 851. Right now our simulation mode is idle so when you connect the robot to the CSA controller they're not synchronized. What we have to do now is go to SRS. In my case I'm using Stolby Robotics Suite version 2016 6.3. I will create a new cell wizard. I will name the cell cell 9, you can name it whatever you want to, and I'm saving the cell in my Stobly documents. Now click next. I'm going to add a local controller. The robot I'm using in the 3D world is RX160. So I'll select this robot. Click next. For our controller, remember we're focusing in this tutorial on the mapping these signals to the robot in the controller, so we need to enable the basic inputs and outputs of the controller. Click Next. And this is the cell that we are creating in SRS. We're creating a robot, version RX160, that has a CSA controller with basic inputs and outputs. Click Finish. I don't have a license right now for SRS, so I get this message. And now our cell is created, and you can see it here in the Cell Explorer pane. There's the controller and here's the robot. Let's select the robot and right click and show its joints view. I'll now right click the controller and then click show emulator. So now the emulator for my CSA controller is running. Let's make it bigger because I need to see the function keys here. There we go. I'll now go to the output panel and display messages from the emulator because I need the address to the controller. In our case, you can see here, it's the local host address of 127.0.0.1 and the port number is 851. Let's now show the 3D view in SRS. And there's the robot. So now we can connect to the CSA controller we have running in SRS in the 4.1 product. To do that, you could go to the Stobly cell configuration panel here and click this button to toggle the connection to be connected and now it's connected. You could also go to the properties panel here, click edit target, and type in the host name and port number, and then test the connection. You can see it will succeed, so click OK, and then click apply. And you can verify the state of the connected to be true, so we know that our emulator connection is connected to that CSA controller. The simulation mode right now is idle, so the robot in the 3D world is not synchronized with the robot in the controller. So the robot's program is running right now in the 3D world, but if you go back to SRS, you can see that not nothing is happening here in the controller or in the joints view. And if we go to the simulation tab and start the synchronization, the robot is just staying put. So to fix that, let's actually have the robot in SRS synchronized with the robot in the 3D world. So now when we're running this robot's program, the robot in SRS will get the updates. Let's reset and then in our emulator connection change the simulation mode to jogging. Run the simulation, go back to SRS. You can see our robot is moving and going through the motions that are happening here in the 3D world. So in this case it's the robot in the 3D world telling the controller what to do to the robot here. Let's reset. And if you make a mistake and you disconnect it or unmap the robot in the 3D world from the controller, just go to the Stobly cell configuration panel here, select the robot element, right click, and you have this option to map the robot in the 3D world to the controller. It's called Change Connected Robot. You can see it's already connected, so it's this robot here. But we can disconnect it. Let's do that now. So we can click that button, so now they're disconnected. If we run the simulation, you can see that even though the robot is running here, moving in SRS, these robots are not mapped. So that is why the robot is no longer moving here in SRS, because the controller is not getting any input about what to do with the robot. But let's reset and remap the robots so we can change them. Click Apply. And now we have nothing mapped to the controller for the robot. So we can right click, change the connected robot, 
and you have an available options here highlighted yellow but we want this robot connected to the controller so I'll select it it's green that's good click apply now the robot is mapped run the simulation and if you go back to SRS you can see now they're synchronizing again let's reset and now do the opposite let's have the controller in SRS tell our robot what to do in the 3D world to do that we have to post process this robots program before we do that we want to make sure that the signals in our robot those inputs and outputs I talked about earlier are mapped to our controller I'll go to the Stobly cell configuration panel select the IO element here and if you go to the properties panel you can see a table of options but there's nothing there right now so what we can do is right click the IO element here and click edit IO mappings this will open an editor that allows you to map signals in components and the inputs and outputs of the robot to your controller so this left pane here is for your 3D world this right pane here is for your connected controller you could also access the editor from the properties of the IO element by clicking this button here and what do we want to map? We want to map those inputs and outputs of our robot, so I'll expand it here. We have the three inputs, so I'll select the first one, hold on the shift key, and select the last one to select all three. Let's now go to the basic inputs and outputs of the controller, and you can see their type right now is an input. So let's select the first three inputs, and what we're going to do is map these signals in the robot to these inputs in the controller. I'll then click map selected button here. You can see the link here. These are now connected and they're listed down here at the bottom. So we have our simulation variables which are inputs in the robot that are type boolean connected to these inputs in our controller. And their value right now is false. Let's now map the outputs of the robot to the controller. For grasping and releasing parts, the robot is using a signal action with an output port of 1, so we want to map that to our controller. In our basic inputs and outputs, let's go down to the first output, so you can see here. Let's map them. There we go. Let's now go all the way down to the bottom and map the outputs of 100 to 103. That's four, so let's select one, two, three, four here in our controller. So we're going to map the outputs of 100 to 103 to these outputs in the controller. And there you go. So you can see we have the inputs of our robot mapped to inputs in our controller. We have the outputs of the robot mapped to the outputs of our controller. Click OK. If you don't want to save the changes, you could click the cancel button here, but that will undo all of our work we just did. So I will click OK to confirm the changes. You can now see the mappings listed here in the table in the properties panel, but this is kind of small and tiny, so if you don't want to see that, you can go to the Windows group here, click the Show button, and from the drop-down menu, select the Stobie Controller I.O. Mappings option here, and this displays this panel. You can also go to your Stobly cell configuration panel here, right click the IO element and click this button to also show this panel. I prefer to dock the IO mappings panel to the same location as my output panel, so at the bottom of the 3D world here. Let's make it bigger and unpin the properties panel, give us some space. And we want to see the simulation values of our mapping, so right now all of them are false. If we run the simulation, you can see that some of them are true, some of them change to false depending on what's happening. When the machine is running its process, very interesting, most of them are set to true, then they're set to false, and we can pay close attention to the machine signal that it actually turns from true to false. Let's reset and now post-process the robots program. I'll go to my Stobly cell configuration panel, and with the robot element selected, I'll right-click and click this option called Post Process Program. In the Create Val3 Application Task pane, give the application a name. I'm going to call it Machine Tending. I'm going to save my application in the same location as the controller 
in my cell in SRS. So I'll click the ellipse button here and browse to that folder. So it's in my Stobly documents and we're actually working with cell 9. The name of your cell might be different. I'll then expand its user folder and save it in the user app folder here. Click OK. You do have the option to write unmapped inputs and outputs to the application. So if your robot program is using signals that you haven't mapped to the controller, which we did earlier, you could write those to the application, but you would get you know, a warning message in the output panel. You could also send the application straight to the controller using the Stobley's Transfer Manager, but we're not going to do that in this video. We'll just create the program by clicking this button called Post Process, and then we'll check our output panel. And yes, we have successfully created the VAL3 application and post-processed this robot's program. And you can see we got zero warnings. Let's now go back to SRS and open that application we just created. So I'll select the robot element here in the Cell Explorer pane. Right click, but we actually need to go to the VAL3 tab here, sorry. I'll now click the Open Application button. And here is our application. So I'll open the machine tending folder and select the PJX file for my application and open it. So now our application is open in SRS, so I can select it, right click, and run the application. So you can see we got some feedback from our controller here. We have to press F8 to start the application. And now it is running. So if we go back to our 4.1 product and run the simulation, Let's see what happens. The robot is doing what it's told, but don't be confused here. Let's go to our Stobly I.O. mappings. You can see in the Stobly cell configuration panel that the simulation mode we're using right now is jogging, so it's actually the 3D world robot telling the controller what to do. And if we go to SRS, that's what's happening. But we don't want that. We want the controller to tell our robot in the 3D world what to do to validate our program that we made offline. So let's reset, select our emulator connection here, go to the properties panel and change the simulation mode from jogging to virtual. So now the robot in the 3D world will synchronize with the CSA controller and if you go to the Stobly cell configuration panel and select the synchronization timing settings you have here the polling and virtual mode time step and these are constant so you can run the simulation as fast as you want, but it will use this constant values here to update the inputs and outputs. So now if we run the simulation, here come the parts, and we do get the, the output set to true. So we know that our I.O. mappings so far are working, but the robot isn't doing anything. That's because we're now using the virtual simulation mode for the connection. So our CSA controller has to tell the robot to move. Go back to SRS. Let's actually move our software over here to the left and get a better view. So we still want to see the robot move and also see the updates to our I.O. mappings. So with SRS, let's move it here. And there we go. You can see in our controller that the power is turned off, so let's change the mode that we want to use a loop. So this option here, turn the power on by clicking this button. And now, to move the robot, we have to click this button here. And since we're using the loop, we can just press the button once and it will hold it down for us. So now the robot in SRS is moving, and so is the robot in the 3D world. It is moving rather slow, that's because we're only using 10% of the speed here. So let's speed it up in our controller. So we're at 50, up to 100. And yes sir, so far so good. What we're doing now is just validating that our VAL3 application is working. So the controller that we connected to our 3D robot is working. So that's one full cycle in the operation. Here's the second cycle. And yep, it is working. And you can see the inputs and outputs are working as well. They're updating. Great. 
Now, if you want more information about using the Stoli add-on, you can, of course, do that tutorial I showed you earlier. You can play around with this layout. I will also provide you with another layout that uses subroutines, which you can you know, learn from as well. And you can try your own type of connections and configurations in SRS. But this completes the video. And if you have any more questions, you can also use our forum at forum.visualcomponents.com. And as always, have a wonderful day.